Yes, there are lots of undocumented hints out there, which people still use from time to time, but there's a reason we call them undocumented. Can I influence the order of predicates in a SQL clause? For example, if I had column greater than zero and square root of column equals some value, then how can I make sure that the positive number check column greater than zero is done first because if there were some negatives and we put that into a square root, then that would fail. So we want to make sure that the column greater than zero was done first and not the square root function. And sadly, the definition of how predicates are evaluated is indeterminate because once again we're in relational algebra here we're in set theory it's not like we can read the sql statement and apply them in a particular order so what do we do let's look at some examples of how we can work around this issue and some commonly thought of examples that might not work as you may have thought so i'm going to create a table called t as it's a copy of dba objects about eighty thousand rows I'm, I'm going to put that one bad row in there so the object ID, which is always positive in the data dictionary, I'm going to add an additional row with an object ID of minus one. And we can see it's got some tags there saying this is a bad row. Here's the question that came in effectively, or here's an example of that. I'm going to do a count from T where the object ID is greater than 100,000 and the square root of the object ID is between one and 10. Now, if we encounter that row with the minus one in it and apply a square root to it, then we're going to have a problem. So what does the database do? Well, it worked, fantastic. Obviously the database is smart enough. It knew that these two parameters, these two predicates must be related in some way. It looked at them and said, object that is greater than 10,000, I must do that first, otherwise square root is going to fail. That sounds great. And so into production, this code goes. And then I say, okay, well, obviously 100,000 is some parameter that people with their users can pass in. So what if they pass in zero and it falls over? All that stuff I just said saying the database was smart enough and knew how to do it is fiction. There is no preset order to the way that predicates are run. If, if you're a dinosaur like me, you may remember, might remember way back in the day uh, with the rule-based optimizer, predicates were evaluated from the bottom upwards, uh, but no such rule exists in the cost of optimizer and correctly so because it's set-based theory. The order is meant to be indeterminate. That doesn't help us here. Maybe if we do it this way, from a semantic perspective, this looks like it'll solve our problem. The inline view says, yep, first go get all the values of object A greater than zero. That eliminates the minus one value that we had in our table. And then put that in an inline view and then apply the square root. But the database, unfortunately, is too smart for us. We have a thing called query transformation. The database comes in and says, yep, OK, I'm going to take this complex query, which has an inline view, and try fold it back into a single query before I optimize it, because that gives me the best chance of coming up with the best execution plan. And so we didn't solve our problem. What if I do a no merge hint? Well, no merge isn't explicitly designed for inline views of this type. It's really designed for things like subqueries, push subquery predicates, etc. So even a no merge hint, unfortunately, still has the same problem. So we seem to be a bit stuck here. Maybe if I take the part I want to run first and move it out into a common table expression or a with clause, I can do with position or with pos with positives as get all the rows where object greater than zero and then do a query against this positive table. Doesn't work. Same problem. The database says, there's your complicated query. Let's try fold it all in together to make sure it's going to run nice and efficiently and therefore the order is once again indeterminate. Maybe if I add the materialize hint, what materialize says to the database is let's take that part in the brackets, the with statement, actually create a temporary table with that result and then use that as my query. What happens there? Doesn't work there either. The reason is the database is smart. What it's doing is it says, okay, yes, I will do that transformation. I will load a temporary table, but hey, I can make that temporary table actually more efficient by grabbing the square root clause and jamming it in there at the same time to make my temporary table transformation more efficient. And we're back to the same problem. What do we do? Well, one option which works and has worked for a long time, but I'm not a huge fan of, is this one where if I add a row num predicate 
into a with statement and typically inline views as well, then that tells the database, well, the only way I can apply that is to run this in isolation. I couldn't fold this predicate in there as well because that would change what the row num result would be. So because of that row num presence, I must run this first and must store it in isolation to a temporary table without doing anything else. And then I can apply the square root function and that works. So you can do that. My only concern with that is, is that's because the database currently says this is a limiting factor. I can't fold predicates in because there's a row num clause. Who knows what will happen in the next version of Oracle? Who knows what will happen when the optimizer patches come out? We might find a way of optimizing around this. For several versions, this has worked and people do rely on it, but there's no guarantees here. There is a hint which used to be documented and is no longer documented called ordered predicates. And the ordered predicates hint said we will apply the predicates in top to bottom order, in the order that they are listed. And as you can see, for this particular example, the ordered predicates hint works. Now, if it works and it solves this problem and the hint's still there, why the hell isn't it still documented? Well, we took it out because it doesn't really work. It works in simple cases like this, but the database has evolved a long way since this hint was first introduced. And therefore, it becomes something that can confuse people easily. For example, what if I do something like this? select count object name where object e greater than zero and square root this i've I now put it in brackets and linked it with an and doesn't work it doesn't solve it by having those brackets what does work though is if i use a case statement because case statement has a thing called short circuiting and what a short circuit says if this is false i don't need to go past this point because false and anything is always false so if this is false, I can stop right now, and therefore I don't need to chug along to this area. So I'll never hit that square root function. In this case, it works. And so a case thing has this short circuit ability where it says the moment I run out of conditions that by definition already gives me the answer. Is the answer definitely false? Is the answer definitely true? I don't need to evaluate the other expressions. So this is one way of doing it to make sure that only when the object is greater than zero that we actually will fall through to this second condition. So a case statement can be done along those lines. I would probably prefer to write up something like this, where rather than having the case statement just return a Boolean, it would actually, the case statement would return some effect for the expression. And the expression is then compared to a set of range of values because then I could make that a virtual column and put an index on it should I need to. So that would then keep it nice and fast as well. Back to that ordered predicates hint. You know, I sort of waved my hand and said, yes, yeah, you can't use it, you can't rely on it, but didn't really justify that. Let's put an index on the object name. So if I use ordered predicates here, as the hint would suggest, I do this first, which means I'm gonna hit that minus one for sure, because it's gonna fail. Then I'm gonna do that second, because ordered predicates, and then this one third. That's how the expression will be run. Therefore, this query will definitely fail, but it doesn't. It broke the rule. It didn't do ordered predicates. Why? Well, I haven't got the execution plan here, but it used the index on object name. And this is why we had to remove ordered predicates because things like this, which you would say, okay, based on the hint, that query should fail. Now it works. The fact that the query works is a wrong result because if we obey the ordered predicates, direction it should mean that that should fail we should get an error from that query and by result you can imagine the opposite is also potentially true a query that works when you put order predicates in now fails even though by definition the query every any query should always return the same result no matter what you do and that's why order predicates really just isn't sustainable yes there are lots of undocumented hints out there which people still use from time to time but there's a reason we call them undocumented, and that is they might disappear, they might work in different ways from release to release. And as I said, I said use the short circuit in case statements here rather than using row num because the optimizer changes with every single release. So if you use undocumented hints or you use undocumented assumptions, the things like row num, well, you're taking thing, you're sort of taking that risk, you're taking that responsibility for knowing that just the next RU you might apply, the next version you might upgrade to might break all that code. So better to use stuff, for example, the case short circuit, which guaranteed to work 
as you roll through the evolution of the Oracle database.